Amjambo. Bwana asifiwe. It's good to see you. It's been a while. I think it's been two years. Um, and to see all of you, kuwaona, mkiwa wazima, na kazi kisonga mbele. Najua wakati, you know, see, I, when I, whenever I come here, stand here before you, uh, the word, uh, that scripture still comes to me. Our labor, the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It has been 20 years. It's going to be 20 years next year. And counting how we came here by faith from that school there. And we appeared like we did not know where we were going. But the, we were obeying the Holy Spirit. And what a beautiful thing to see men and women who believe in the vision of Cornerstone Christian Church. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I want you, I came with my bodyguard. These days, I guide people to guard me. Tumefika uh, hapo. And please receive Angie. Angie, will you stand? Simone akiwa hivyo. She is dangerous. Awezi kunikaribia. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Uh, greetings from uh, um, Mr. Kimau. Uh, I told a few brothers coming and they send a lot of greetings to you. Do you receive? Yes. Amen. Whenever I come, I disorganize you. So allow me to disorganize you again. Please, you the people seated there, come. You have been promoted. Please come here. Please come here. Thank you. Thank you. Chagua mahali ukae. And nimeona pale Fabish amekaa. Fabish ilikuwa utengeneza team ya Cornerstone. Hii miaka yote. Yule jamaa tulimpatia Eugene Fabish. Kwa sababu, he is a good coach. Na tukasema atutengezea timu ya Cornerstone hapa, siyo kimau, kule Western Kenya, tushinda nage. Vipi buwana? It's never too late. Na si uanze. Si uanze. Make sure that uh, Dixon is a goalkeeper. Buwana asifuwe. Na njini mko pande hii? Njini mko pande hii? Njini mko pande hii? Toka pole pole, hawataki. Santi. Amen. Shall we look to the Lord? Lord, we thank you today um, in our sharing today in this brief moment. We do pray for your blessing ministry to us, O Jehovah God, and meet us at the point of our needs. As we share your word, speak to us in the name of Jesus. We do pray and believe. Amen and amen. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, my favorite chapter, chapter 11. Um, thank you so much for those who responded to our funds, funds drive last week. We had a funds drive and um, we were looking to the Lord to help us to buy some windows and doors. Um, we did not manage the Fredo frames, but we have managed the windows. So this week, uh, first floor will have wonderful windows by the grace of God. So we started working on Monday, and um, they told me by Wednesday, Thursday, the windows, so that we can. I love to end the nyingine. It is step by step, and we shall be able to finish. I was talking to Mama Mili and, and another team, uh, some team members there and said, do you know we need five million to finish this work? I said, no, I didn't know that. I thought we only need boards and a few things. But every step, the Lord has been so faithful. You look at it there and you appreciate what the Lord can do. We can say together with the psalmist who says, the Lord has done so much for us, whereof we are glad. Amen. 
I said amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. The book of Hebrews is written to a very mature a very mature people and they were actually Hebrews, Christians who were scattered abroad from the land of Israel. They were everywhere. They were businessmen, they were builders, they were you know travelers all over in the, in the Roman Empire. And particularly the one who was writing was targeting those who had believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in their journeys, as they spread all over, um, spread all over Roman Empire, there's one challenge that was coming to them because they were carrying the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. They had come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And therefore, as they went abroad and they went into the synagogue, it appeared like the narratives had changed. It was no longer Judaism. It was about Jesus Christ. It was about his suffering. It was about his resurrection. And it, you know, it was about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And they received two challenges. One of the challenges that they were facing was challenge from within. Within in the sense of that the other Jews who did not believe that Jesus was Messiah, they felt like they were being challenged. The synagogue system were being challenged. People were being removed from uh, worshiping on Sabbath and etc. Particularly when now they emphasize that Jesus is Lord of a Sabbath, that Jesus rose again from the dead. And you know the narrative had, there was a, a poison that had actually created a narrative concerning the Lord Jesus Christ because they said, tell them, tell the disciples, tell the Romans and others that the disciples came and saw Jesus from the grave, he did not rise again. And those poison, you know poison travels faster than good stuff. So they know that Jesus, the disciples stole him in order to create a narrative that he rose again from the dead. So it is there. And again, they were being challenged in their religion that, uh, listen, there is greater than Moses is here. And the Lord Jesus Christ. They are talking about salvation. They were talking about the temple in the heart. Temple. The, our temples being in the hearts. Receiving Jesus. Knowing Jesus. Walking with Jesus. That is the narrative that they were carrying. That they were taking everywhere. And therefore as a result of this. There was opposition. Opposition from the Jews. In fact they were persecuting them. And challenging them. Do you think that your faith in Jesus is greater than our faith in Moses and Abraham? That was there. And you know, the, the, the Jews had their advantage. Advantage in the sense that they were leaders. They were the, what you call the Sanhedrin. The leaders of the Jews were leading. And the Roman Empire had given them authority even to persecute. To persecute, to persecute and to send to jail. And, and this is the challenge they were going. Again, on the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire were also feeling challenged. Why were they feeling challenged? They were feeling challenged because that they were talking about another king. They were talking a king that is above the Roman king. A king of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, that, that's, you remember when Paul says in, in the book of uh, Philippians, God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name that is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven, things on earth and things under the earth. That was not augering well with the Roman Empire. One has a few son. And therefore, the writer writes to encourage the Hebrew Christians. Chapter 1, he told, tells them about the sup, uh, supremacy of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. He, when, 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 in chapter 1, when he says, in certain times, in the old times, in the Old Testament, God spoke in different ways. And then he emphasizes and says, today he speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. 
Praise the name of the Lord. That Jesus is the voice of God. Not just the voice of God. He is God himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Talks about supremacy of Christ. And many other things that the author discusses. Now when we come to chapter 10 of the book of the Hebrews. He is telling them to persevere in their faith despite their persecution. And you know, brothers and sisters, we face persecution every time in our lives. There is suffering. Even as the word of God says, a man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. A man, I'm talking about a man here, is a man and a woman. That there is a problem. And it's more so, if we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the world does not understand us. And it's because of that, suffering comes in. And therefore, in chapter 10, he is actually telling them to persevere in faith. To have perseverance. Kuwa na uvumilivu wa imani. Ninapenda vile anaileta, particularly in uh, the, the, the author, which I think is Paul, myself, Banas Fiosana. And when he is writing to Romans, he says in chapter 5, we glory in tribulation also. Because we know that tribulation works patience. And the patience works experience. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But now looking at these Hebrew Christians, he tells them a few things in, the, in chapter 10. Particularly from verse 19. He, he says verse 19, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new living way, opened through the curtain that is his body, and then he goes on. Praise the name of the Lord. And then he says, in a ways of encouraging them, he says in verse 25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another or more, as you see, the day is approaching. He's telling them, the one who began the good work in you, he is going to finish it. Amen. And that you do not be discouraged during the process. And the many other things that he talks to them concerning enduring. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 36, he says, you need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. What he has promised. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, just a little while. May I say to us, brethren, we are in a journey. Amen. 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 Maybe, maybe change it a little bit. Brothers and sisters, we have been in the journey. And each of our journey, we have a story about ourselves. The day you received Jesus Christ, the suffering you came through, or the suffering you went through, and where you are even today. There are still some challenges about you, or challenging you to remove or take yourself from the faith. And as you are looking ahead, it appears like it's going to be more by the way. As we keep on waiting for the coming of the Lord, things are not going to be better. Things will be tougher. But the goodness is that he is going to be with us Amen. until the end of the day. Amen. So now when we come to the chapter of faith, the chapter of faith, that is chapter 11, he is now telling them, he is now, first of all, he defines what faith is and he tells them, listen, you are not alone in this journey. There were men and there were women who were ahead of you. Are we together here? Many a times when you look into the chapter of faith, we just want to define, but let's look at the context. He is telling them, you have not been alone. There were others. Amen. Amen. So he started quoting them giving examples of them, how they went through difficult moments and how in their time, God used them to be able to do something unusual. 
And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, in these unusual days, we need people who do unusual things. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have that chance. By just persevering, you know that you are doing an unusual thing. Because there are many shortcuts. But you're saying, I am going to hold on until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he comes and begins by defining what faith is. Verse 1. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The New International Version says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what to do, what, what we do not see. It gives us an assurance of what we are not seeing that still God is in charge. Even what we don't know about tomorrow. God, the faith in God assures us that it's going to be well. May I preach a little bit? Yes. It is going to be well. Amen. You are here and you are being shaken. It's going to be well. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You have no job. It is going to be well. Amen. Do you know you're not going to miss job forever? God is going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way where there is no way. So it is going to be well. Praise the name of the Lord. It's going to be well. So don't just give up because of the situation. It is going to be well. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in verse 2 he says, By faith, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. By faith, we have, through faith, we have people who have gone challenges through challenges, like the challenges that you have gone, you are gone through, and they made it. There was a lack, but they persevered. There were challenges, but they persevered. Praise the name of the Lord. There was something that God needed that be done through them, and they did it. There were fights. That the Lord wanted them to fight and to fight that he would fight together with them. They fought and they won. There was patience in the people of God whereby the Lord, sometimes the Lord gave them just to be patient and they endured and they passed the test. Do you know, brethren, we have no reason for backsliding. We have no a reason for giving up. And that's why one of the writers says, for this reason, we faint not. We cannot faint. We have to go on. And Hebrew is the same Hebrew that says, therefore let us run the race that has been set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. So he says here, brethren, there were men, there were women, and you know, we, when we read the stories in the Bible, we said, I wish I was living in the days of Paul. Maybe you get a rocker. Maybe you get a rocker. I don't think now I can endure being crucified. I don't know. Unless the grace of God comes. Oh, I wish I lived in the days of David. You're not talking about fighting with the swords and killing, destroying, cutting people's head. I think I would fail the test. Each one of us has a challenge. And in our time, there is still what we have to do and what we must do. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. My intention is just to give you those few examples. Now let's look at it. In verse 3, he says, By faith we understand. Through faith we understand. There are things that we don't know. But through faith we understand that the world we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen... 
the stories which are written, the people that we read about, actually they pass a process which whereby they saw and they listened or they received from the heart of God. Hallelujah. And they understood his intention irregardless of the challenges that they were facing in their time. Do you know what, brethren? Before the foundation of the world, God knew that you would be there. Amen? Before the marriage of your mother and father, the Lord knew there will be a Maina, there will be a Katunge, there will be an Omondi, there will be an Omolo, there will be a Motiso somewhere that happens to be you. He knew. And in his plan, that is from the foundation of the heart of God, he even gave the details, hallelujah, of your life. One, your provision. Two, your protection. Three, your destiny. Hallelujah. He also understood the challenges, the times, and the challenges that you will face in the season of your life. Amen. I said amen. amen. So that's why he says we understand. By faith we understand. That even in the season of our lives. Still the Lord is in charge of our destiny. Amen. amen. Now those who came for the burial of my father. He died at the age of 115. And there was a time he came to a point, I asked him, what can we pray? What can we tell God? And then he told me, tell the Lord, why has he forgotten me? I've been waiting to go, but he is not letting me go. Do you know there are times in our lives we wish we were not born? I mean, I'm talking about human thinking. Human think. There are times when we ask ourselves, Mimi ni wakitugan. There are times when we come in life and we begin to feel like Ikuyu says, we feel like Nyenje. We feel like cockroaches. Useless. Because of situation and challenges. Or circumstances. But I want to say here, friends, God had framed it. God had framed it. We are never a mistake. We, we are not a mistake. And we will never be a mistake. The question was is. That. There were men. Who understood. The intent of God. For their lives. And I want you to know. Brother and sister. That God has as an intent for you. I know. The thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of peace to give you a hope and to give you a future. You are not hopeless. We are not hopeless. Our hope is in God. And that's why we must cast our eyes to him. Because, because he is in charge. Amen. I said amen. amen. All right. Then he gives us a few examples. He says, By faith, Abel. Abel. By faith, Abel. What was the temptation in the time of Abel? A man, there were a community, a very small community, but his brother was so much far away from God and God wanted to use Abel to show him how to sacrifice. How many times did Abel sacrifice to the Lord? In the Sunday school, the story used to be rushed very quickly. That Abel offered a beautiful sacrifice, better than Cain. But you know, it was not just one sacrifice. 
And it was a continuous sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. He knew the time of sacrifice. He knew his responsibility. He knew his obligation. He knew the time he must be there. He actually had to budget his time. He had actually to make plan even for the goods that God had given him to be able to present before the Lord. And how easy was it to sacrifice? It was very difficult. It took a process, first of all, to decide, I am sacrificing this one. And then take that one to the place of sacrifice. Kill it before the Lord. Now, because there were no many people, it is him who had actually to deal with the cow. Kill it. To imagine kuchinja ngombe wee peke yako. Maybe cows. Wajani kulala. Maybe cows. And then you have to slaughter. Then you have got to lit fire. Then you have to stand before the fire. Hii ndi waswaili wanaita kukamia. To stand in that presence of the Lord despite the heat and be able to work on to ensure the sacrifice is consumed and it becomes ashes. Those people who have worked in butchers, particularly those who choma nyama, they say, hii kazi tunafanyaga, uwezi kufanya miaka yote, kwa sababu inachamushaga damu, watu wa kuchoma nyama wanakufaga haraka. He had to stand, na hii ni ya kuchoma watu wa kule. Hiyo ilikuwa ni kuchoma mungu wa kule. Na mungu alikuwa na kula yote. Kuanzia intestine mpaka mifupa. Kukamia mpaka mifupa. Kuweze kuwa jivu. It was actually a whole day business. He says, I am standing in the presence of the Lord. You know the word of God says, Come bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night. In the house of the Lord. In other words, once you begin the responsibility, you have to finish it. You cannot leave the sacrifices on the altar. You have to make sure it has become jivu. You have to make sure that the Lord has enjoyed it. Brethren, there is a call of faith into this. How much are we worshiping today? How much are we standing in the presence of the Lord today? We are in a hurry. Within two hours, everything is structured. Opening prayer, have a minute. Announcement, six minutes. Worship, most of it, particularly when it comes to individuals. Now begin to check. In the house of the Lord. How we have become so mean. How much. How we have become so impatient. Standing in the presence of the Lord. Pastor do a research. When we begin to worship. And when we lift up our hands before the Lord. And then we. You press. Work a stopwatch. One minute. Two minutes. People are tired. And we go to the next thing. Mimi napenda muziki kidogo. Tuimbia ile ingine. We are actually running away from the presence of the Lord. But David says, it is in the presence of the Lord where we find our joy. Shall we come back? Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And tell you what, brethren, when this, when, when we come into this, when we come into this area of worship in our lives, we don't have to be told, lift up your hands. You will say, I want to lift up my hands. Oh, hallelujah. Because you are standing in the presence of the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord. What a beautiful thing to stand in the presence of the Lord, to see the sacrifices being consumed. 
And let me tell you, brethren, it's not just about this sacrifice that we take and put it there. The Lord himself says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is your reasonable service. Brethren, brothers and sisters, can we come back to the era? Can we bring the era of Abel in our lives today? About the presence of the Lord. David loved it. When he says, I was glad when they told me, let us go to the house of the Lord. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to be there. There at the cross. There to think about his goodness. To think about who he is. To stand silent in his presence. Hallelujah. What a sweet sana. Even when it is so costly, when others are not available, availing yourself, Abel was declared righteous. Shall we say amen? amen. Shall we say amen? amen? And that's a whole topic that we can discuss for several days. But then I don't know why, what was happening with the writer. Thoughts kept on coming and going. From Abel, he jumps to who? He comes to Enoch. He talks about Enoch. At this particular time, people had increased in the world. People were increasing. The Bible says he was seventh from Adam. But he's living in a place whereby people did not have time for God. Did not have time for God. But then here is a story. The Bible says he walked with God. He walked with God. Is this, this is not just a prayer walk. His lifestyle was shaped around the will of God, the purpose of God, the direction of God, the intention of God. He built his life around there. He wanted to know what the Lord is saying. He wanted to be where God wanted him to be. He wanted to say what God wanted him to say. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, brethren, when we pick up the heartbeat of God, we can see our generation and the other generations to come. Why? The Bible says that in the book of Jude, that this man preached and told the world, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his angels. You know, as we walk with the Lord, the Lord begins to open his heart to us. That is the secret, brethren, of building ourselves in the faith of God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. He began to even speak of the things that will come and there will be evidence. And what is the evidence? Brethren, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And that is, could be over 4,000 years to where we are. But he saw what we are seeing. Look at the, the man of God, Job. Job in his trials, in his commitment as a husband, a man of God, as a man of prayer, a man of sacrifice, a good father, a good husband, a good family. He feared the Lord. He worshipped the Lord. And even when he was going through trials, he says, I know my Redeemer will stand upon the face of the earth. Brethren, what we are doing here is a part of the prophetic plan of God, even for the things to come. That our lives today will be a voice of another generation to come if the Lord tarries. That they will be able to say, the body of Christ, the brothers and sisters, endured hardship. They went through trials. They denied themselves. They did this for God. And we can be able to receive and enjoy their blessing. Do you know the blessing of God is generational? 
Amen? It is from where you are. It can go to your children. It can go to the third generation. It can go to the fourth generation. It can go, actually the Bible says, up to the seventh generation. What we are in God today determines about the intent of God. The intent of God about the knowledge of God being increased. Tomorrow, day after, year after, a decade after, two decades after, three decades after. What we are today. Talked with God. Don't look at this coming to church every Sunday as just a routine. God is building a voice for tomorrow. He is building a voice for day after tomorrow. He is building a voice for our generation. So our coming in here together. And that's why Paul says, the writer of Hebrews says, don't neglect the coming of God together, well, of the people of God. Because when we come, the mind of God is released to us. Every time we come to the house of the Lord, brethren, something fresh, something new, something never had is dropped into our spirits. We come discouraged. We go home encouraged. We come in despair. We go, we go home knowing what to do because the Lord has put it in us. He put it in us to prepare for the generations to come. We are heroes in the making. We are heroes in the making. We may not be ce celebrated now, but they will be celebrated along the way. Shall we say amen? amen. And then he goes, he jumps from Ab Noah. He jumps from that. And then he goes to who? He goes to who? He goes to who? I got you. He goes to who? Does he go to Abraham or to Noah? Does he go to Abraham or to Noah? Does he go to Abraham or to Noah? So it is Abel. It is Enoch. It is Noah. Now think about 4,000 years ago or something close to that. A man named Noah. Amen. A man named Noah who had the voice of God. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. By faith we understand what the Lord intends to build for our generation, for the future, for my life. Noah understood the voice of God. Some of the voices of God that come to us are very difficult. Some of the voices of God coming to us are very controversial. And then the Lord says, I'm using you as one man. As one man. To build me an ark. The voice of God sometimes brings us to us responsibilities that are beyond us. That without his anointing, we cannot make it. Amen. Build me an ark. How am I going to do it? Do you know the Lord can be so detailed? Go to the wood. And you will be cutting the wood according to my direction. It's very easy to cut the wood, to cut the logs, but to shape it in the direction of God, it is very difficult. Let me tell you, brethren, the details he is going to give you. Amen. We need to build here. This house has outlived his purpose. Tell your neighbor, it's time to build. Can we say it's time to build? It's time to build. How are we going to make it? The Lord is going to provide the details. The moment we obey, the moment we say yes, 
then money will begin to come. Amen. And so that by the time you are done, then you ask yourself, were we that rich? Were we that able? I never imagined. But let me tell you, it is the work of the Lord. Amen. And we must listen to the details. And when the Lord says it is time, brethren, we don't look at the able among us. You look at yourself. It is you. What is the Lord saying to you concerning the building? Maybe the Lord says it's time to begin now. Maybe it is the time for us to begin. Amen. Maybe it's time for us to begin to put some pillars here. Honestly, if you son. And wait for the details. Because God has the details. Tell your neighbor, God has the details. Hallelujah. God has the details. When he called Abraham to leave, he did not know the way, but God had the details. You may feel an urge to begin a business. How do we be I begin? Where do I get the capital? God has the details. Praise the name of the Lord. You have come of age, you feel it's time for me to be seen or to see someone. How do I begin? God has the details. You look at your children and you begin to ask yourself, how will my children make it? God has the details. And that's why we say, he is the author and he is of our faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we began the church in 2003, we were wondering, the church is not even registered. But we have said, this is Cornerstone Christian Church. How are we going to make it? How is this journey going to be? Some people began to run away from us. Some are, hey, si ungeanza church, I've started the church when you are about 30. How can you begin a church when you are aging? How are you going to make it? God has the details. Amen. Amen. Our work is simply to follow him. And then Paul says, we shall know as we follow on to know the Lord. Amen. Follow on to know the Lord. For your life. For the details of your life. 120 years. Noah worked on the details. And when the Lord has finished with the details. That Safina. Without a scientist. It must stand and it must float in the water. Doesn't matter the waves. It will withstand every wave because the details are from the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. I feel that is the voice of God to somebody. God has the details. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God has the details. God has the details. Amen. What is it? Then obey. Abel, obeyed. Noah, obeyed. Abraham obeyed. We come to that point. By faith, Abraham. I like that. By faith, Abraham. When the Lord spoke to him to leave his country. By faith, Abraham. That is the beginning of a story. Put your name there. By faith. Okay, can I say, when I say by faith, put your name and shout your name. Are you ready? Are you ready? By faith. Yes, sir. By faith. 
Okay, by faith. Hebu niangalie kusema nguvu. By faith. Sana. By faith. Hallelujah. In other words, the voice of God is a wake up call for your life. It says, wake up, all ye that sleepeth. The voice has come. If the voice has come then, the direction has come. According to Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. When the voice comes, the voice sets you on a course. The voice will set you on a certain path. And in that certain path, a testimony will be written. Amen. A testimony of God's provision. A testimony of God's wisdom. A testimony of God's abundance. A testimony of God opening ways in the wilderness. You will sing with a singer. God will make a way where there is no way. I'm not just singing the song. I know the song. I'm not just uttering the words. I know the story. Who will make a way where there is no way. Because I have been in that place where there was no way. I have been to a place whereby my mind came to an end. And then when I thought it is finished, then the Lord said, pass this way. The voice of God will set you in a journey. In a certain course. To build a testimony about his provision. A testimony, brethren, is not just 1927, I received Jesus as my personal savior. That's okay. 1967, Jesus became my savior. 1992, I chose, actually you had no wisdom, to choose salvation. Nobody had wisdom. Nobody had wisdom and understanding to choose what you have today. The Holy Spirit had mercy on you. He set you by releasing his word. And when his word was released, you said, yes, Lord. And you became a Christian. He set you in a journey from there. And as he set you in a journey from there, he keeps on increasing. Hallelujah. When you are young, the journey is for a child. And you run and give a testimony. But as you mature, then the Lord begins to set you in paths that are difficult. And that are hard. That require thinking. That require resources. But it is the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, the voice of God will take you to peace. Now look at the voice of God, the way it brought Ezekiel to places. The Bible says, he brought him into the valley of the dry bones. And then the voice of God gave him the responsibility. There are even times when the Lord, the voice of God will come in a question. Will this bone live? You know it. And then the voice of God will set you in a place whereby it will be now if that thing is to continue it is between you what you do or what you say in that particular time. He said son of, son of man prophesy. That is a very hard thing. They are bones. Moja ni ya mugu, ingine ni ya kidole. Kuna bone ya masikio. Ingine ni hip bone. Ingine ni mbavu. Ubavu mmoja, huko hapa, 
na ubavu mwingine uko Kariobangi North. Alafu anasema son of man prophesy. Child of God speak. Hallelujah. Declare the voice of the Lord. Declare to the voice because brethren the voice of God must be heard where we are. We are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. Some people who are against us, voices which are against us, but it requires that we speak, son of man, prophesy. Look at your family. Child of God, prophesy. Look at your parents. Look at the place where you come from. Who speaks and what speaks? Is it tradition? Is it witchcraft? Is it drunkenness? Is it rebellion? Son of man, prophesy. Hallelujah. Your husband, your wife, they, are, they don't walk in the Lord. Your children are not walking with the Lord. Your parents are not walking with the Lord. You don't have a job. Others do not have a job. So, son of man, prophesy. Amen. God must bring us into that place. Amen. Abraham, leave. Ezekiel, speak. And I want to say here today, as I finish, sometimes, you don't have to wait for somebody to pray for you. You just have to speak the voice of God to your situation and your circumstances. Amen? Is this salvation of your husband? Say it. Is this salvation of your children? Say that. Is it a job? There are people who go sampling preachers who, pre who have prayed for them. Niliombewa na huyu, sikupata. Nikaombewa na ule, sikupata. Nikaombewa na ule, sikupata. Nikaombewa na ule. Sasa akija kwako, unakuwa the ninth one. As a case study. Let me tell you, brethren. That narrative can change. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You can speak to the situation. May God bless you. May I feel that is enough for today. That is enough for today. Amen. He's talking about perseverance in chapter 10. And then he gives examples. He gives examples in chapter 11. Abraham. Isaac. Later on there. Gideon. Jephthah. And others. And each one of them had a different story. But they left a voice of God in their generation. This is your generation. There is no other generation. There will be never any other you after you are gone. So your life must speak the voice and the, of the intent of God for your life for your family, for your generation, for your location, for your district, for your country, in the name of the Lord. Shall we rise up before the Lord? Amen. We're not going to sing songs in order to do that. We're just going to say, what is it? An example, an example of Abel, an example of Noah, an example of Enoch. An example of Abraham. You are there. As a child of God. As a man of God. As a woman of God. What is the Lord saying to you? Because when you hear his voice. You can speak to your situation. And I believe the Lord has spoken to us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to the Lord Jesus Christ. And speak, first of all, to the situation in your family, your life, and your family, before we speak to others. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you that Lord Jesus you speak to us. Thank you for speaking to me. Don't just whisper. Just just be aloud before the Lord. Oh, thank you Jehovah God. Your word is so true. You are my healer. You are my peace. You are my joy. You are my salvation. You are the rock of my salvation. You are my peace. You are with me. Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my extended family members. Thank you Jehovah God. You have done many things to us oh Jehovah. And even in our challenges, Jehovah God, you have helped us.